Entonces, ¿qué tal? Uh, yo soy Case, yo soy de Miami y he trabajado en como Red Hat uh, solo. Siempre estoy trabajando en Kubernetes para pues, muchos años. Y quisiera empezar preguntando, ¿quién escribe código? ¿Quién escribe como TypeScript o, o JavaScript? Y ustedes que están escribiendo TypeScript y JavaScript, ustedes están como, ustedes conocen la infra infraestructura. Muy bien, ¿o no? ¿Conocen a Kubernetes bien? Eso es para ti, mi, mi amigo. OK, bueno, entonces, vamos a hablar en los operators. Eddie hizo un muy, muy buen trabajo explicando. Pero empezamos con el por qué. Um, bueno, a veces en inglés, a veces en español. Pero primero, para la seguridad. Porque la seguridad no es para cualquier persona. Cada equipo necesita seguridad y si puedes como centralizar la seguridad en una, un lugar, mejor. Para que los desarrollos, los devs están haciendo dev cosas, ¿sabes? Como no queremos que los devs no están haciendo cosas que no pueden hacer muy bien, ¿sabes? Uh, algunas personas saben esto. Cada persona tiene las fuerzas. Um, por standardization. Porque este equipo A, este equipo B, este equipo C tienen la misma problema y están haciendo cosas diferentes, puede ser lo mismo. Um, bueno, entonces, ¿por qué, ¿por qué Pepper? Pues Pepper es un admission controller, claro. Pepper es un SDK para operators y Kubernetes controllers. Y con Pepper puedes programar, like, tribal knowledge, cosas que siempre están pasando. Cada vez que estoy upgrading este base de datos, se muere. ¿Sabes? Como hay, hay cosas para programar, para como resolver cosas así. So, Pepper es parecido a KubeBuilder, es parecido a Operator SDK, uh, es parecido a Kyverno, uh, parecido a OPA, right? Porque es, es an admission controller and también puedes construir operators. Entonces, admission en Kubernetes. Iba a explicar de admission en Kubernetes, pero creo que no hace falta. Pero básicamente en, en, uh, hay dos fases de admission. Hay un mutation phase y validation phase. Entonces, en, en mutation, cuando un pod viene al cluster y está ahí, ustedes pueden cambiar el pod. Pueden decir como este pod debe tener security context debe tener resources, un CPU, una memoria. Si no está, yo puedo ponerlos, yo puedo quitarlos, yo puedo hacer lo que quiero que viene a mi cluster. En el segundo es uh, validation phase. Y en validation yo puedo decir, si este pod todavía no tiene resources, de malas, no voy a dejarlo, voy a negarlo. Entonces tenemos mutate para cambiar, validate. Y estas son fases de admission control en Kubernetes. Pero con Pepper tenemos más cosas. Uh, Kube API Server. ¿Quién habla con 6443? Es the, the port for Kube API Server. ¿Ustedes uh, hablan directo contra Kube API Server? No. OK, bueno, Kube API Server es un servicio, se llama Kubernetes. Siempre está en 6443. Y es más poderoso para escribir código directo contra Kube API Server. Sí. OK, no problem. Sí, entonces, watch es, es una cosa que quiero explicar. Por esto, es, esto es lo que hace um, KubeBuilder, Operator SDK. Ustedes están preguntando en esto. Lo que pasa con watch es tú mandas un, uh, pues, uh, un URL que yo quiero ver un pod o un deployment. Cuando este cambia, ustedes van a tener las deltas. Cada cambio que pasa, tú tienes este pod y lo que pasó. Y esto es como son los operators. Y todo no puede ser por admission. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué todo no puede estar como mutate o validate? Porque las cosas existen en el cluster antes de controller. So this is, a, this is a little bit technical, um, but I just want to kind of nail down this stuff because we're about to go into a live demo, and that's always fun. So here, 
TypeScript people, JavaScript people, we're gonna mix the infrastructure with actual coding, right? So we wanna, we wanna bring the power back to our developers. When a config map is created with name, example two, we're gonna mutate that config map by setting a label, pepper was here. Then we're going to validate it. If it has the label pepper, then we'll accept it. If it doesn't, it's going to deny it. And then we're just gonna watch that config map for the rest of its lifetime in Kubernetes, in our cluster. So, I mean, ¿qué puedes hacer con mutate, con validate, con cosas de admission? Puedes hacer cosas de multi-cluster. Cada vez que esta cosa entra en este cluster, yo quiero que sea en US East 1, yo quiero que sea en US Central, yo quiero ser de todo. Con Pepper, estamos escribiendo código, y lo que hace Pepper es Pepper genera este, your validating configuration webhook, your mutating webhook configuration, your deployment, your service, your service account, your RBAC rules. It's going to do everything for you. You focus en lo que lo más importante. Yo tengo reglas, y yo quiero que, yo quiero que ellos están en código. Cada vez que estoy upgrading ese base de datos, me toca reempezar el pod. Bueno, admission in Kubernetes is como un bouncer in an, in an club. Hay primero, digamos, el bouncer. Ba ¿Quieres entrar al club? ¿Tienes una gachucha? Bueno, el bouncer va a decir como quita el gachucha. Si quitas la gachucha, puedes como seguir. Pero después hay otro bouncer que está validando que todavía no, es, no tienes a la gachucha, y después puedes entrar. Entonces, en in, in admission, hay, puede ser como 10 fases de mutation y un validate, o un mutate y después seis validate. No importa, pero siempre es mutate and then validate. Entonces, this controller, cualquier Kubernetes controller, es para simplificar las cosas para que cada equipo no tiene que hacer cosas distintas. Cada equipo tiene las mismas seguridad, seguridad. Entonces, aquí vamos. Yo tengo dos clusters. Ok, primero, Voy a empezar un proyecto nuevo con Pepper. Es así de fácil. Ah, uh, sí, sí. Ya estamos creyendo una aplicación nueva en Pepper. This is an admission controller. It's, it's, it's an operator. Podemos hacer muchas cosas con este. Pero es solo para que ustedes vean lo que está en este demo México, this folder. Tenemos un scaffolding. Ten, digamos, yo tengo Hello Pepper. Hello Pepper es un ejemplo más básico. Dices, bueno, cuando hay un namespace created, yo puedo sacar un label. When a namespace is created with a certain name, I want to actually create a config map. I want to do a, a REST API call to the cluster to create a second config map. ¿Cómo se ve? ¿Mejor un poco? Sí. Okay. No problem. Cuando un config map está created, I want to merge it. I want to change it completely. I want to validate that it's been changed. I want to watch it for the rest of its life cycle. In fact, I want complete and utter control over every single thing that happens in my cluster. I don't want anything dangerous. I don't want pods running with privileges. 
because we were just talking about uh, pods, right? And pods exist in containers. And then there's basically, there's user space, and then there's kernel space. But privileged pods, we know, can escape out of containers, and then they can get on the node where you, they can exchange, uh, they can actually uncover Kubernetes secrets, they can uncover credentials. Uh, so we, we just want to kind of create a standardization here. Entonces tenemos Hello Mexico. Y Hello Mexico is Hello Pepper. Y yo quiero mostrar a ustedes cómo funciona este vaina. Entonces, primero, tenemos este deployed, pero yo tengo dos clusters, déjame ver, pero sí, yo tengo esto deployed. Yo quiero mostrar deploy un namespace con este label y yo quiero quitarlo. Yo quiero deploy un namespace y averiguar que este config map está. Entonces, miremos. Entonces, primero el namespace. Si yo tengo este namespace y miremos esto. Yo quiero sacar este label remove me. Deploying. Namespace created, right? It's just a mutate. It's just going to mutate. It's not going to validate. Let's look at the namespace. So we deployed this label with the names uh, with the label remove me. If I get the namespace showing the labels, we do not have that label anymore. So it's just like kind of routine, complete control. Uh, let's look at something a little bit more interesting. There's one about uh, let's validate something. Let's let's think about something that's a little more serious, and let's think about a dangerous object that's coming into our cluster. Uh, let's look at this one. When a config map is created through my validating webhook, I want to validate that it does not have the annotation evil. This is just a representation of really a pod with security context that's running root. But if it is evil. I actually want to reject it. If it's not evil, I want to approve it. So this is what we're going to test now. Aquí tenemos este config map evil. No evil config map annotations allowed. Okay, entonces, eh, es realmente para los problemas que ustedes están viendo en su empresa. Es, es for standardization. Pero ya con el poder para hacer lo que necesitas durante estos eventos, es mucho poder. Entonces, ahora, algo más chévere, uh, y esto es para ustedes, yo, yo creí esto como ahorita. Um, is un web app controller. Entonces, esto sí es un operator. Miremos esto. Entonces, when a web app is created, first of all, I want to validate. I want to look at the syntax of the CR. So there's a CRD, and then there's instances of the CRD. They're called custom resources. So I want to look at that instance and see if it makes sense. Like, is, is there nonsense? Is it going to have, like, is it going to try to run in kube system or do something that I consider, like, not smart, then I'm going to enqueue that instance because I want to do a reconcile loop on it. I want to do work on it. I'm going to keep it high level because I, I really want you all just to kind of get the, the notion of it. Um, second of all, we, we talk about reconcile. Eddie did a great job of uh, talking about reconcile. Well, when, when my w what my web app eff effectively represents is it's a deployment, it's an Nginx deployment, with a config map that has this really dumb, simple HTML file that like, talks about Pepper in Spanish and in English. And it can basically be changed from Spanish to English, uh, and you can change the color. And it's just like I said, like kubectl create config map dash dash from file index.html. And like we can kind of configure it through this instance. So when anything that I need to deploy my application, the deployment, the service, 
whatever is deleted, I'm going to immediately redeploy it with watch. That's the reconcile loop, right? I will not let it go down. Um, and, and that's what reconcile really is. So here we're going to go into the demo. Okay, bueno, my, my controller is deployed right now. So the very first thing my controller does is it deploys an instance of a web app in the background. So I'm gonna get the CRD. I'm gonna make sure that's already in my system, it is. So now it knows how to speak to a web app, right? And a web app is just something really dumb. Just a, an example of a deployment, a service, a service account, and a, a config map, of course. And I told you I made this CR by hand, the language, right, the English or Spanish, the amount of replicas, or the theme, which can be dark or light. So now I'm going to create the web app namespace. I'm going to create an instance of this CRD called web app, and it's going to be web apps light en. So it should be in English, it should be light. Let's see it. Bueno, ya está. Miremo, miremo lo que hace when I deploy that or despega. I didn't know that word until just now. We got a service, a deployment, and config map. So all I do, I don't care, I don't know about Kubernetes. Let's just pretend that, right? Let's pretend all I wanna know, do is deploy my web app. So I deploy a web app and now the operator does the heavy lifting behind it. So now, what does this actually look like? Well. Good operators, I'm not gonna really go into that, but a good operator should write the status on the instance of the CR that's like, hey, now I have completely reconciled, you are complete, or your status phase is ready, but that's kind of a little bit not important. I wanna really show you what the web app did. We're gonna port forward to localhost 300, 3000, and we're gonna actually go there. Okay, so we have this web app. It's a simple index.html file. It's got a light background. It's in English, right? Because we saw that instance and it said en. But now let's, uh, let's change it to Spanish. We're reapplying. The theme is now dark. The language, the language is es for Spanish. We apply. It's configured, and we can assume there's a reconciliation process going all along, but I mean, it's talking straight to Kube API server. This is going to happen immediately and extremely fast. Oops. Okay, we refresh, and now it asks me to translate. Entonces, ahora tenemos la página uh, in theme black y en español. Entonces, la última cosa. Let's delete something that the web app owns, right? Let's delete, uh, let's delete a config map. And the config map is the index.html file rendering the web app useless. Because, yeah, the, the, the HTML file is attached on config map to the pod. regreso. It just comes back, right? It's, it's always reconciling. So if I actually want to delete my web app, I have to delete the thing that owns it. And in Kubernetes, there's something called owner references. And so the owner reference is the instance of the web app. In each deployment, the service, the uh, config maps have an owner reference that is the instance of the web app. So I can just delete the web app and I should expect to see nothing in web apps, uh, web apps namespace. Entonces, this is a very slow kind of reconcile because basically everything needs to be deleted. I want everything to be contained and owned by one person. 
Ah, my, my, my system's running out of memory a little bit. But this would basically trigger a cascading delete. Um, so let's look at my pods. Listo, that's, that's it. Um, can I answer any questions for you all? Inglés o español? Yes. Um, I see some overlap on the, it sounds like it has some kind of a GTOPS functions similar to Argo CD. Will it make conflict if I have Argo CD? How would make it work if we have both or? or Admission controllers in GitOps have always uh, existed together, but there are very specific rules to what you can mutate. So you can mutate pods. And, and, and so it really depends. If you have a GitOps workflow, you're not gonna mutate config maps. You're not gonna mutate services. You're gonna mutate pods itself. And so you have your application. Your application states uh, consist of stateful sets, deployments, daemon sets, I don't know, right? But those have a pod spec. So the GitOps engine doesn't care if you mutate the pod and add extra security context or assign resources. So it really depends on what you, uh, what you reconcile. And best practice when you're creating admission controllers is to never, ever uh, mutate anything that's uh, owned by uh, a GitOps engine. So it's only pods. So you deploy your, your deployment, and then your admission controller will do the mutations that you program. That's a great question. It can, it can, it's very broad, right? It's, it's an event-driven JavaScript tool that lives in the admission phase. So our company uses it completely for security. We, we solve really hard problems with it. So we wanna deploy, we wanna deploy Istio. We wanna deploy GitOps. We wanna deploy Prometheus. We wanna deploy Jaeger. We wanna deploy all these things. And then we want this person to deploy an app and for it automatically be hooked up with virtual services, with Prometheus rules, with destination rules. So we want it just to come through admission, oh, this app's coming, and automatically configure everything based on what comes in through admission. It, but yes, security is, is like foremost. <laughs>